Hey everyone! The map you're looking at right now is Chapter 18 of Conquest. I think this is a very good place to take a closer look at Leo. Right out of the box, Leo performs pretty well, and if you give him the right support, he's a very competent Dark Knight throughout the game. However, we've seen some of the reasons why you might want a Dark Mage to learn Vantage. Leo can do that, just not as early as Odin can. But sometimes, circumstances dictate that Odin's class change should be done later. Let's say you plan to give Odin one heart seal so that he learns Vantage, but then you're going to bench him in favor of his daughter. If you also want to use the first four heart seals on other characters, then Odin has to wait for the one that drops in Chapter 16, and he has to do some more training after that before you can go recruit Ophelia. And then there are scenarios where all five early heart seals are spoken for. That's when Leo stands out. As long as he builds the right supports, he's the only character who can learn Vantage and then get back into a magical class without ever using a heart seal. By the time those supports are getting done, most enemies are promoted, so any character who is going into an off-class for skills really has to pick their battles, especially if it's happening in a story mission and not during one of the easier child paralogs. On this map, a reasonable approach might be to push for the objectives on three fronts. You can send good Hammer or Bolt Axe or Calamity Gate users down the left side to fight the generals, a strong ninja or maid might walk through the northeastern entrance to take on the sorcerers, and a mix of sturdy physical units can battle the paladins and bow knights to the southeast. Meanwhile, Leo can spend his turns duking it out with the heroes. Those guys are great targets. They have no exceptional stats, and importantly, they don't have any ranged weapons. That makes it pretty easy to manage them. In fact, let's get started on that. We can talk about everything else as we go along. Leo is going to set up alongside Baruka. As I was saying a minute ago, Leo's most interesting feature is that he can learn samurai skills and then regain tome access with only friendship and partner seals. That second step requires a wife who provides either Wyvern Rider or Troubadour. Because Leo can't marry his sisters, that means Baruka or Felicia, respectively. Malignite is better than Strategist, so Baruka is the preferred option, and she's being shown here. With either of those partners, Leo has normal support growth, so the support levels required at each stage are 3, 4, 4, and 5. Since level 3 is the highest any pair can get in one map, that takes 7 battles. For his friendship with Odin, things go a lot faster. The requirements for those 3 stages are level 2, then 3, then 4. The two of them can unlock the first two support ranks in one map each, then finish the A support in just two more. Juggling those two support chains at once can be tricky. When Leo joins, he wants to earn level 3 support with Baruka and level 2 with Odin so that he can unlock both C supports. In the very next battle, it's the reverse, to get that B support with Odin in just one map. For the two maps after that, Leo should split his time about evenly between his two partners. Once he's at A with Odin, he can focus on Baruka exclusively. Let's think about where that puts us in the campaign. Leo joins in Chapter 14. Leaving aside any paralogs, the next three battles he can participate in are Chapter 16, Chapter 17, and Invasion 2. That makes this chapter the very first one where he can use a friendship seal. But if you keep counting, you might see that the seventh battle, the one where he can finish his S support, is Chapter 20. If it takes that long, Leo's resource advantage evaporates. What's the point of getting in and out of the samurai tree with no heart seals, if heart seals are unlimited by the time you're done? The way to avert that is to accelerate the timeline with paralogs. If Leo sees a paralog or two in the middle game, he can switch back to a magical class before chapter 20, or even before chapter 19. And both of those maps are places where a mage with Heartseeker and Vantage can be very powerful. Suppose we have two paralogs unlocked after chapter 14. We can choose to do those battles whenever we want, and the timing makes a big difference. If we were to do them right away, then Chapter 16 would be Leo's fourth battle, and Chapter 18 would be his seventh. If we're building his two supports as quickly as possible, then he could go into Master of Arms as soon as Chapter 17. But it makes no sense to do that. Leo doesn't want to spend three whole maps in the Samurai Tree. He just wants to get the skills and get out. And without a Heart Seal, he can't get out until he has an S support. So the logical thing to do is to use the Friendship Seal here in Chapter 18, right before that S support gets done. On the other hand, we might do one or both of those paralogs after Chapter 18. In that case, following the same train of thought, Leo probably wouldn't want to change classes yet. He'd still be a Dark Knight on this map. The point is, if you ask when and where and how you should dip into alternate classes for skills, 
There's no hard and fast answer. It's always contingent on other factors. I try to present methods for skill dipping in main story missions because you complete these maps in every playthrough, but they often aren't the best time and place to do it. Amazing. The reward for all this effort will be a Vantage Strategist or a Vantage Malignite. That kind of unit can be extremely powerful, but you have to use him with care. If you're relying on Vantage, you're dead unless you kill your enemies before they can hit you. And there's no life and death yet, so those kill thresholds often require attack stance. You need very good positioning to make the most of that. What makes Vantage Sorcerers so much more versatile is that you can slap Nosferatu on them and use them brainlessly. Not to mention that they have higher magic, so when Sorcerers are involved in attack stance setups, they don't need as much help. All this time that I've been talking, Leo has been steadily cutting down heroes. He's almost done, and I would be remiss if I didn't say anything about Jacob before the end of this. The second servant is almost always terrible at combat, but if they change to strategist, they can use their staves on a mount, and they also get super early access to rally resistance and inspiration. Those things are really useful, no matter what pace you're playing at. Must I restrain myself? <laughs> With that kill, the main task is done. However, when you're going for Vantage as a promoted unit, it's often worthwhile to knock out one more level in Master of Arms to get Seal Strength, too. That skill doesn't really matter at all, but getting it now means you can go back to Master of Arms later and learn Life and Death, the ultimate skill for any Vantage Mage, by leveling up just once. That can take as little as one experience point if you time your class change properly. This is a general principle. If you think you might want to get a level 15 skill from a suboptimal class, you should consider going through for the first three skills much earlier. You also may have noticed that I've been making Leo use an axe. Seems odd, given that he has a perfectly good sword rank. But if he's marrying Baruka, sometimes it's worthwhile to unlock the Bolt Axe, either by taking the Chapter 13 Arm Scroll after reaching D rank, or just by working up to C the old-fashioned way. Yes, Leo could just use the Calamity Gate, but the Bolt Axe is quite a bit more powerful, and there's only one gate. Leo may not be the only person who needs it. You see, I've been presenting Leo as a kind of alternative to Odin, the guy who can take over Odin's late game role with guaranteed good stats and the different set of resource requirements that can sometimes make him the more convenient choice. But there's no rule against training them both. The idea of escaping the samurai tree with a partner seal works for Odin, too. And if he's marrying Elise or Felicia rather than Baruka or Camilla, he might finish that entire support chain before Leo even joins. For the price of one Master Seal, one Heart Seal, one Friendship Seal, and two Partner Seals, you can get Vantage not only on Sorcerer Ophelia, but also on Odin and Leo, who can support each other for mounted dual Vantage attack stance. That's a setup I can only describe as magical. You're still here. Do you want a little taste? I'll help! The chosen hero will rise! No mercy! Here I am! Ready for action! Such a nuisance.
much power! It's my lucky day! Again! So excited! Stay on your toes. 